If you've been using Midjourney for a while, you may have realized the images it generates aren't that large. At 1024 by 1024 pixels, it's definitely not high res enough for printing. So I decided to invest in the Topaz Photo AI software to see if it's a good solution for upscaling AI generated art. My goal is to be able to use some of these images I created with Midjourney on physical products such as printed posters and stickers. But in order to avoid your products coming out pixelated, you'll need to create higher resolution images. This software is pretty new and it excels in a few select areas, most notably for enlarging images, but it also works good for sharpening and noise reduction. So let's jump into Topaz Photo AI and see how it works. Once you have the software open, all you need to do is drag and drop your image. Immediately, you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison with the original image on the left and any modifications you make to the right. Keep in mind that as you adjust your sliders and settings, it will take the software a few seconds to adjust, so it's not an immediate preview. By default, it looks like it upscales the image by 3.38x. We have a few different options, such as 2x, 4x, but I'm going to use max. This will take my 1024 by 1024 original image and enlarge it to 6,144 pixels squared. You can already see the dramatic difference this has created. It's really interesting to see how the software upscales the image, especially when it comes to a graphic and illustrative image like this. Obviously, you'll want to play around with settings depending on whether your image is a photograph or a vector-based image. So we see here in this section that says AI model, and if you hover over it, you'll get a little bit more information, but they offer four different AI model types. By default, it just uses standard. It looks like it recommends graphics for art-generated images. You'll see there's a bunch of other adjustments you can make like remove noise, sharpen, face detection, or preserve text. But if you just want a quick and easy upscale version of your image, you can probably be safe with the default options. And when you're ready, press save image. It looks like it adds your images to a queue and here you can adjust some export settings such as adding a prefix or a suffix to the file name, and you can change the save to file location and also the format. By default, it will preserve the current input format, which for this image is a PNG, but it looks like the size of this PNG will end up being about 53.3 megabytes. So I'm going to change it to a JPEG, which dramatically decreases the file size by about half. After pressing save image, it took my computer about eight seconds to process this one image alone. So let's pop both of the before and after images into Photoshop and take a look. You can see how the after image on the right is much more sharp and it's enlarged and it will work much better for printing purposes. Here's a comparison of the image size for the before and after. So after adjusting that image, I realized that you can actually open multiple images within this software and toggle between them. So you'll notice the little thumbnails on the bottom left-hand side. This is an image I generated with Midjourney. So let's try upscaling this one. I'm going to adjust to a 4X upscale and change to high fidelity since this is meant to be a photograph versus a graphics related image. It looks like it turned on recovering face by default. It knew that this was a portrait image. Again, remember that every time you adjust a setting to give it a few seconds to load, you won't see an immediate preview. I played around with the remove noise and sharpen toggle buttons, but I didn't really like how it changed the image, so I'm going to leave those off. Now let's change the upscale to max. So the nice thing about this is we can go through all of our images and make adjustments, and then we can export when we're done. Here's an example of an interior image of a studio. I'm going to give it the same settings of high fidelity and do the max upscale. And you can see as I'm zooming into different parts Parts of the image, how it upscales the image. Such a big difference. You can see how the image on the left is really pixelated and, and you definitely wouldn't be able to print with it. Now let's transition to another photo. This is of a Victorian house set in San Francisco. I'll use the same settings, high fidelity and a max upscaling. And this is where you might want to play around depending on what the subject of your image is. See what the remove noise and sharpen features do and if they increase the quality or create an effect that you like. 
It's interesting how the remove noise smoothed out the texture on this section of the house. I'm not usually one that likes to sharpen my images dramatically, but if this is something you like on your images, you might want to keep it on. Now for our last image, I wanted to test this out on something that's meant to be a sketch or a drawing. We'll start out with the graphics AI model and make some adjustments from here. You'll notice that when you create AI generated images, any kind of text is just lorem ipsum. It doesn't actually make sense but I want to test out this preserve text feature and see how it changes the image. Once you toggle the option on, it looks like you use a brush to go over the area in the photo where the text is. You can adjust the size of your brush and add or subtract to your selection. Once you're done, press apply. I would have to test this on different images where the text is much more crisp, but in this example, I don't really like it. I'm also curious how the graphics and high fidelity AI model varies on an image like this that is for a drawing. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. In this example, I actually prefer the high fidelity model versus graphics. You'll see that the shading of the pencil is much more smooth, while on the left, it's more sharp, but maybe that's the style you're going for. Now I wanna go back to that first image of the cat illustration and see what that looks like in the high resolution model versus graphics. Here are both options in Photoshop. The graphics version is on the left and the high fidelity version is on the right. Again, I prefer the high fidelity just because it has a smoother texture to the illustration, but I think this will depend on the type of illustration that you're upscaling. Now that we've adjusted all of the photos, we'll export. So we can see all five images are in a queue. It took my computer about 57 seconds or so to export all five of these high resolution images. I'll open these up side by side in Photoshop for a last comparison. On the left are the original images and on the right are the after or upscaled images. For the portrait, I'm really happy with how the results turned out. It does tend to give the skin a much more smoothed effect, almost like it's been retouched, but generally you wouldn't be zooming this close into an image. The Victorian house image looks pretty good too. And overall, the interior studio image looks great as well. I think the drawing image turned out the best. The after image really looks like it's an authentic drawing, minus the portion of text, of course. I would want to adjust that in Photoshop and probably remove it completely. And again, the before and after of the cat illustration image with the high fidelity version versus the graphics version. While this is my first impressions review of the Topaz Photo AI software, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Is it worth it? Well, that depends on what you're going to use these images for. If you want to use them to print out on a poster or any other product that you design, it's a must that you have high resolution images. While there are free options out there and I didn't test any of them for comparison, overall, I'm pretty happy with this software and it serves my needs for it. I hope you found this first impressions review helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment below and check out this video next on five inspiring ways to use Midjourney.